at the moment, uh, my daily work is changing, uh, um, changing continuously because uh, uh, right now I'm in an uh, operating theater that we closed last week uh, and uh, transform it uh, into a COVID ICU. And this is the second block out of three in my hospital. So now we have a general ICU that is clean with no COVID patient. Uh, but now we are, uh, we canceled uh, all the elective and non-urgent surgery and we are using two other uh, theaters for COVID patients. So we are expecting a surge in the next days and we all hope uh, that this surge will not reach the intensity of uh, Lombardy. Uh, we are uh, probably nine to 10 days uh, behind Lombardy and uh, the intensity that uh, this epidemic reached uh, in the area around Milan was really, uh, really hit very hard uh, the healthcare system. So many hospitals uh, are nearly collapsing and uh, the forecast for the next uh, 10 to 15 days uh, um, is even worse. So uh, this situation changed completely our lives uh, in uh, little more than one week. We are uh, working very hard with extraordinary efforts in order to increase our ICU capacity and hospital capacity uh, with uh, uh, also high dependency units uh, working a lot in order to increase uh, availability for patients. But uh, I, we are not sure that will be enough. So my suggestion is uh, that you get prepared as soon as you can because uh, uh, once you start uh, admitting uh, severe ICU patients uh, it's probably too late uh, for uh, social distancing, uh, isolation and lockdowns. So yeah, on, on that note Marco with the measures that have been taken in Italy almost complete lockdown like you say do you, yeah. you don't expect that to have a huge effect for you over the next yeah, I mean, nine or ten days? We, we, are, we all hope that we'll uh, see those effects in a little more than one week, uh, probably 10 days, but the next week will not uh, be infected by the, uh, the lockdown because uh, um, this is one of the characteristics of these uh, disease and especially of the uh, severe cases. So uh, this is uh, an investment for the future, for the second half of March, and it is essential, otherwise uh, we will collapse. Uh, but the next uh, few days uh, will not be affected at all by the lockdown uh, implemented a few days ago. So that what we know now from the epidemiologists is that uh, a lockdown 24 to 48 hours uh, earlier can have uh, huge consequences uh, 10 to 15 days later. Marco, tell us a little bit about the, the people you're seeing coming into ICU there um, uh, and, yes. and, and what you're seeing. To tell us we, what, what, what you see are, in front of your own eyes. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's true that for nine people out of ten, uh, uh, they will experience a, a sort of mild uh, clinical course uh, like a seasonal flu. But uh, uh, for uh, approximately one people out of ten, uh, this will be uh, much more severe, requiring oxygen therapy and antiviral specific therapy and hospitalization. And for a large part of those patients, uh, uh, this severity will reach uh, uh, a need for endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation for many days. So uh, we are treating those cases. And this means uh, a long journey in the ICU, a long ICU stays, and many days of ventilation and mechanical ventilation because the respiratory failure is severe, is reversible, but it takes a lot of resources uh, and a lot of time uh, in order to improve. We see some of your staff in the background. How are the yeah. staff in the hospital there, the uh, San Giovanni yeah, hospital? They, yeah, we are still opening this block and we, uh, we are just admitting now the first patients and I'm in the clean area. Uh, we, are, we, we are really working very hard. We doubled our shifts and after 10 days, we are already, almost all of us, we are sleep deprived. And uh, that's a problem because we are going to run a marathon and uh, we started with a rhythm that we are not sure we'll be able to bear for one or two months. So, but we, we cannot do anything else. I mean, Marco, when you, when you look at, you know, you're obviously and understandably preoccupied with what's happening on the ground in the hospital, in the city, in the region that you are working in. What do you say to, to other countries around the world? Yeah, to other countries, I, I have a lot of contacts with colleagues. I've been contacted by media, media outlets and colleagues all over the world in the last four or five days. 
and I'm trying to spread the word as fast as we can, uh, get prepared as soon as possible, because the only way to present, prevent a uh, healthcare system collapse uh, is to enforce a lockdown as soon as possible, to increase uh, your ICU capacity and your hospitalization uh, capacity, and uh, to, uh, to uh, use simulation and to train in, the, in using uh, PPEs, personal protective equipment, because it's crucial, because uh, if a lot of healthcare staff get sick in the first uh, few weeks, uh, then uh, you will not have anybody able to take care of the patients. Yeah, on, the, on that, Marco, have you, have you and your colleagues, the healthcare professionals, you know, are you, I know you said you're sleep, sleep deprived, are you holding up um, in terms yeah. of being infected by this virus yourselves? Yeah, I have a couple of colleagues who had tested positive last week, so we were tested and I'm negative now. I have to repeat my test on Tuesday. Uh, and I know of colleagues in the red zones in Lombardia where, where they were overwhelmed by patients that refused to be tested uh, as they were asymptomatic and they chose to continue to treat infected patients and working with uh, suspect uh, infected colleagues uh, because uh, the workforce is really scarce and uh, ICU patients need uh, very specialized staff, both clinicians and doctors and both uh, nurses. Nurses are the real heroes of uh, this uh, epidemic and this emergency. Yeah. Um, just finally, Marco, I know you said that you're focusing on trying to expand capacity. You're standing in a room yeah. that is now being turned yeah. into a ward. Does Italy yeah. and, and your region have that excess capacity to draw on? And, and how important is it to have those things in place when you're looking at other countries early on? Yeah, it, I, I'm not sure that uh, all regions in Italy will be able to do the same as Lombardy. Lombardy is one of the richest and uh, with the... Uh, the, the largest leading teaching hospitals, and uh, they are making extraordinary efforts. Uh, and also we have the advantage of having them uh, some 10 days ahead of us. So we will uh, take the opportunity to learn from them. We are sharing information very quickly with colleagues. Uh, we have daily webinars uh, and uh, networks to share information. Uh, we are really making extraordinary efforts because this is an unprecedented situation for all of us. Um, and I hope that other countries, but I cannot predict what will happen in countries with the less efficient uh, healthcare system and also uh, less abilities to, uh, to create networks and to collaborate because we cannot uh, work uh, uh, in a silo, we, we, we have to uh, work uh, in a network. Okay. So we have responsibility for all the patients, not only for the patients uh, that we admit uh, in our specific hospital. Marco, just finally, when you started on this career journey, I mean, yeah. did you ever expect to be in this situation right now? I, I'm, I'm aware you probably have prepared for it very well, but now it's here. No, How uh, do you feel? Uh, <laughs> oh, it, it's surreal sometimes. Uh, and uh, also, I, I think that the lockdown and the emergency sparked a lot of uh, feelings and solidarity and uh, strengthened a lot of people and characters. Uh, uh, we, we, we discovered and we realized that we are more uh, probably resilient than, than we thought just the last month. Uh, I, I'm prepared to treat the, those patients because those are respiratory failures and this is my daily job. Uh, but uh, for sure nobody was, was prepared to treat uh, so many patients uh, at the same time. So this is Marco. unprecedented for us. Yeah, Marco, thank you so much for taking this time to speak to yeah. us. We wish you all the very best and um, hopefully thank speak to you, so you again much. soon. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.